Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. I hope everybody is having a great day. As for me, it has been one. I'm going to leave it at that. I ain't going to tell you one what, but it's definitely been one. Um, trying to get back to the office and uh, knock some things out. But uh, got to answer whatever's calling when you got to answer it to the best of your ability. And I, I, I do that the best I can. So, look, this is a little different ride, riding with Rick, but it's still riding with Rick. Uh, let's chop it up a little bit. Um, as I'm watching everything that happens, I'm thinking about uh, my elder, Dr. Claude Anderson. I mean, excuse me. Uh, man. Uh, wow. And what he would often say, he says that if you're not working or operating as a team, you lose by default. And when dealing with uh, him and his wife, uh, Joanne, when I was doing the Blueprint 1.0, um, that was this thing he kept saying, we won't play by a team, we won't get together, we won't work together. Uh, we refuse to uh, literally uh, bring our funds together, Black Group Economics, which you knew that's what he preached uh, with great veracity. And, and, and to me, it goes beyond just the economic element of it. It goes to the point that we simply won't get behind one another with any consistency, with any collective thought and movement. And it shows in the results. Something my grandfather used to say to me. My grandfather used to say, you can't complain about the outcome when you didn't contribute to the solution or when you didn't contribute the way you should or when you made choices that you knew weren't going to turn out the way that you needed it to turn out. That is absolutely unacceptable. Then I look at everything that's going on. I've been talking about uh, black men lead. Uh, Marion has been doing ghettos, forgotten daughters, and I've been doing work with black women uh, from incest to rape to trauma to domestic abuse for over 20 years. We've stood up and I've gone to war and battle with school districts across this country, not just in uh, Houston, not just in Dallas, uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg uh, School District, Sands Tower. I went all the way up and battled all the way to the top of that school district on behalf of young black males who always get shafted. Uh, I mean, obviously you get exceptions that get through, but as a general rule, black males do not get the same attention. I don't know why it's vibrating sometimes. But anyway, uh, y'all have to forgive me on this because I don't know why it doesn't normally do that, but it's doing it for some reason. Maybe I don't have something going on the phone, but I don't know. Anyway, look. We have so many things. I, I, I did uh, a segment this morning about multi-generational trauma. That's 30 years of research that's laid out, that explains so much of what we're doing, so much of the reason why we're doing it, how we confront it, how we deal with it. We literally have the answers. We have the work. We have the body of work of some unbelievable minds. I have given myself to understanding. And here's the thing. I didn't give myself to understanding the things I know about multi-generational trauma, epigenetics, adverse childhood experiences, the things I know about uh, disproportionality of special education, versus the things I know about economic disparities, all the research and hours and hours. I didn't get it so I can go debate somebody, so I can sit down and lord it over somebody and sit down and talk about what I know and make myself look important or whatever. I didn't, I didn't do it for any of those things. I went and I did it so that I could show my people the way out. I did it so that I could stand up and say, hey, hey, march with me, go this way, let me show you this. I built program after program after program. The thing is, I can only get it to who I can get it to based off of what resources I have, and I've done it. It works. 
it works. I'm talking about people, and, and, and I'm telling you, it's not just the young kids that I'm helping. It's not just the little kids that I'm getting before they, I'm actually getting with cats that's three time repeaters. That's a part of this high ass recidivism rate of 70 plus percent recidivism, meaning that they reoffend. Here's a, here's a number for you. Black males who drop out of high school are five times more likely to go to prison than those who don't. Then, once they're in prison, they are 73% likely to repeat a fan or to recidivate. You see the money playing that? We're going to alienate them in the school system, turn them and make them feel unwanted, make them feel unaccomplished, attack their confidence, attack their passion to learn. We're going to force them out. Then we're going to let the rest, just let the odds and the numbers take care of the rest. It's hard to sit up there and get out there and make a living without skills, without the ability to learn, without the ability to be trained. You need to be able to read and comprehend. You need, need to be able to have a certain uh, minimal understanding. But also, there's the thing about structure. It's not just what you learn in school. It's the mindset of completing what you start and finishing something, going in to start something and finishing it that you don't get. And it just shows that kids who drop out of school struggle. And, and, and when you happen to be a black male, you don't just struggle. You end up Because here's the thing. We can talk about crime all day. Crime can be engineered real easily. All you got to do is engineer unemployment and no access. Because here's the thing. Men are respected to take care of themselves and their families. For the most part, there are some subsidies that you can go out and get as a male. But for the most part, the subsidies are reserved in full for women. They can go out and actually be taken care of. Not well, but for the person who isn't driven enough to be okay. A male doesn't get that. And then if he's a male who really and truly wants to do what his natural, inherent, primal instincts is telling him to do, and that's appropriate and start a family, he understands that I not only need to be able to feed myself, I got to be able to feed this woman, and I got to be able to feed these kids. If I cannot find a job, there's only two other ways outside of income. That means you have a job or a business. That I put them in the same category. You're creating an earn, and earning a wage, uh, whether it's your company or whether it's somebody paying you to do it. You, you're doing that. That's the first way. That's the most traditional way. Then the second way is subsidies, some kind of assistance, whether it be disability, whether it be some form of the form of government assistance that men can qualify for. Um, and again, forgive me for this. Probably gonna drive you crazy. Just listen to it. Don't, don't, uh, don't watch it if it's shaking. It may not be shaking when it's over. I don't know. But anyway, um, but at the end of the day, if you don't qualify for subsidies, guess what your next option is? Crime. You either earn a living, get taken care of, or you come up with it illegally. Those are the three options of how you make a whipping. There's no other way around it. So then if I am alienated from school and nobody guard, stands guard for me, nobody goes out there and nobody says, look, hey, we can't allow this to happen. We're going to stand up for these kids. We're going to create our own educational institutions. So important. I was just sitting up talking to an old classmate. I went to high school. I went to high school in... Um, an all, to an all-black school. I mean, literally an all-black high school. There were two Hispanics who happened to live in our neighborhood. A brother and a sister. They went to that school, and I swear, in the four years, they, they were in the same grade I was in. One was in, he was in the same grade. I think she was a year behind. But from the year he got there, when, when I got there, until I graduated, I don't think I ever heard him speak. They just came there, went to their class, and I was never in either one of their classes, so I don't know. But I never heard them speak. I just think they stood out like a sore thumb. It was literally 4,000 black kids with about a 95% black teacher ratio. And the teachers were there because they wanted to be. And I'm telling you, there is a difference. There's a difference in teachers who care. There's a difference in seeing people who look like you in authoritative positions who care about your future and who are not just there just to cash a check. 
and we refuse to come together and create those environments. That's why black kids who are homeschooled do so well, because nine times out of 10, they are a part of a black homeschooling organization. When I homeschooled my kids, we had we were on field trips in the city and out of the city. We uh, in the city and out of the city. Uh, we had expos. We did everything else, and then the kids can still go play for the high school they're zoned to if they want to play sports. But what we did is we were able to take them and literally because we're working with them and we know them and we love them and we see them outside of the school environment. We know what their gifts are. We know what they like. We know what they're passionate about. We feed those things. We grow those things. We enhance those things. That's where they're going to expand themselves in this world. Not trying to be like everybody else. But what we got is a, a system where we are just playing along. Uh, racism works because we're compliant. We play along. We go along. When we understand that we take, we rob racism of its power when we refuse to be compliant, and I don't mean going out tearing up stuff just to tear it up. I mean, they, if they saying this is how you got to do it, we find a way to do it that best benefits us because you got to understand the system is built to benefit them. We're just in it. It's not built for us. It's built by us, but it's not built for us. And then we are sitting here expecting them to give us what we need. We are expecting them to educate our children to compete with theirs. We're expecting them to give us equal footing in the financial arena. We're expecting them to give e equal funding to black businesses to compete with white business. We're expecting them to do what we're supposed to be doing for ourselves. And we sit up and we wonder why we're at where we're at. We sit up and we wonder why we can't get ahead. Like Dr. Anderson said, look, big is day. If you don't play as a team, you lose by default. We're losing because we won't contribute we're losing because we won't get in the game. We're losing because we won't go in the hood and do anything, but we'll talk up and down about how horrible things are. We're, we're losing because those of us who know how to behave and carry ourselves as men and women won't take the time to spend with those we look at and say are out of line because we think we're better than them. And so we sit up and we look at them and we'll rather try to relate with our white counterparts than to find a way to love and relate with our brothers and sisters who are struggling in certain areas because it was designed for them to struggle in. We have got to do better. You know, I mean, I've gone on and on and on talking about fundraisers, 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 fundraisers. And if I was dependent on my people to support the work I do in the hood, it'd be a lot of people homeless. There'd be a lot of people sitting up, not getting mental health care. There'd be a lot of people sitting up wondering what's going on with their child. There'd be a lot of people sitting up asking for help with their kid in the juvenile system. And there'd be a lot of females sitting up struggling with all kind of stuff that went on in their lives that the family won't let them talk about. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that little elephant in the room that nobody wants to talk about that we keep sweeping under the rug. That's a big part of our problem. But we'll blame the hell out of women for every little freaking thing that goes on. It's me. I hate that. And, 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 and women don't get the clapping because you do the same thing to men. As if they had a better or less stressful upbringing. We got to do better. We can talk about it all day, but we got to do better. So this is my clarion. We can we can sit up and we can know all this stuff. We can regurgitate it. We can quote it. We, I'm not having debates to debate. I will sit down and I will let iron sharpen iron with brothers who are putting in the work who want to make changes, people who want to contribute, and we can learn from one another. But I don't want to sit up and debate about what this is and what that is. I don't want to sit up there and try to show who's got the greatest intellectual prowess. And I don't want all that bull crap. I'm done with it. What I want to do 
is sit down and take my people to the promised land. And I don't mean that like I'm Moses or something like that, but I know what I do. I'm damn good at it. And I can connect with some other people who are damn good at it. And together, we can do some unbelievable things together. But we have to work together. We have to become a team. We can't continue to lose by default. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get off, uh, try to get back do what I got to do, but I just really, truly had to sit down and uh, get this off my chest. Uh, some will take it, some won't, uh, but it, it needed to be said, and that's just who I am, and that's what I'm going to be, and that's what I'm going to do. I told you in the beginning, I'm going to here to tell the truth. I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here uh, to be popular. I'm not here. I'm, I'm, I'm probably never going to have a huge following because I'm not going to fluff things up. I'm not finna go for the sensationalism. I'm not picking fights just for, uh, for for clicks and likes. I'm not beefing with somebody just to get on. I'm not doing none of that bull crap. What I will do is I will give you what I've learned. The, 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 the thousands upon thousands of papers and, and uh, books and articles and, and research and everything else that I've done to become aware of what's going on at a level that I can literally uh, effectively contribute to the solution. And that's all I want to do. Now, some people are going to help at some point. Some people aren't. And that's good. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep giving you truth. And, and, and you can tell when people are just here to be entertained because if it's something about a celebrity, you see the subscriber count go up. And then when it gets to talking about the real meat of the matter, subscriber crown. Well, look at it go. I'm like, they thought hey, we come in here. This is not a gossip column. Now I'll talk about stuff that's dealing with celebrities when there's a lesson to be learned from it, when there's something to be said, or when I'm going to bat for one, or when I'm calling out one from being a complete total sellout. I will do that. But just sitting up there talking about what's going on with them and it has absolutely nothing to do with how we're going to do or what we're going to do in our communities. I would much rather sit up and see them coming in and being a part of it, contributing, uh, showing up uh, because of their celebrity status. The impact they would have if they would show up. The problem is most of them are showing up with mess, more messed up mindsets than the people we're trying to help. But again, that's what I have to share. I'm about to get off here. I absolutely appreciate uh, you guys that do show love and stop by to see me. Click the like button and all that. But it's time to elevate. It's time to give. It's time to come together as a team. I'm tired of losing by default. On that note, look, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. If you want to give, look in the description box. And at the top of the description box, it'll show you how to give. On that note, I'm out of here.